Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, we're going to work on graphing tangent and cotangent. So these two are very interesting trigonometric functions. Um, and when you look at them, they don't quite look like uh, your normal sine and cosine functions. Because of course they're not. They're, they are tangent and cotangent. Uh, the key for really graphing these is recognizing the sine and cosine that work in the background. And you'll see in the process that it's usually a good idea to start with the asymptotes and then find some key values around those. So let's go ahead and get this process started and see uh, how we could build the graph of tangent and some key things we want to put in there. All right, so this first one we want to graph is tangent. Uh, and like I mentioned before, the key is really recognizing that tangent is sine over cosine. Now that's important to recognize because it gives you a clue on where to put the asymptotes. The asymptotes will happen wherever the bottom is equal to zero. So you want to think back to what you, the graph of cosine looks like and essentially put an asymptote everywhere cosine would equal zero. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab our rulers and start with that. So I'm going to put uh, a few tick marks here. Let's do every two inches. And then let's mark out what these uh, little tick marks represent. So cosine is equal to zero at pi over two. And it's equal to zero again at three pi over two. And if you want to go in the negative direction, heading off that way, then you would have negative pi over two and negative three pi over two. So again, I'm getting these guys by figuring out where cosine is equal to zero. Now that we have those, let's go ahead and mark out the asymptotes by really just making a dotted line, uh, a nice vertical dotted line. And we'll do this for each of our uh, key points we built here. So nice dotted line here. One here. And one more, negative three pi over two. Okay, so we have our asymptotes. Now what do we do? Well, the graph of tangent essentially wants to hug really close to these asymptotes, uh, and then it actually equals zero at the halfway points between them. So that means when I'm halfway between these two asymptotes, it'll equal zero. When I'm halfway between these two, it'll equal zero again. And when I'm halfway between these two, zero. And this has kind of the shape of like a, a cubic function. So imagine hugging really close to this asymptote and then eventually coming in, going through that point and then hugging close to the other asymptote and it'll just keep getting closer to uh, those asymptotes. So this would be one period of tangent. And we'd simply repeat this for the rest of the graph. So I'm gonna go through that little zero right there then continue getting close to the asymptote. So there's another period. And let's go ahead and draw one more of course, it'd continue like this infinitely in both directions, always getting closer to these asymptotes when it reaches one, but never quite touching it. Cool. All right, so since we see it has these zero points, it's probably a good idea to mark out where these are as well. So the first zero point happens at zero. Then you want to think of the halfway point between uh, these two values. So uh, pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two. So this is just pi. Uh, and of course, going the other direction, we'd have negative pi. So all good places where this thing would equal zero. All right, moving on. Um, sometimes you may wonder like how far up and down this should be stretched. And it's really tough to tell because, you know, usually with sine or cosine, we can have the uh, amplitude marked out by its highest and lowest peak. Whereas this one, it keeps going off to infinity, keeps going down to negative infinity. But there are some key points that you can mark out that will help you figure out, um, you know, the stretching factor uh, when you get to transformations. And that's these two key points right here at one and negative one. Essentially, that's the halfway point between the zero and the asymptote. And it's another key point where you know it goes through uh, uh, the graph. Um, so we'll mark out these as well. Let's see. 
So halfway between these two, I'd be down at negative one. Halfway between these, I'm up here at one. Halfway at one. And let's see, halfway at negative one. Uh, so let's go ahead and mark these out so we can figure out where they're at. So halfway between these two, we are at pi over four. Halfway between pi over two and just pi, uh, let's see, we gotta count in fourths. So I have one fourth, two fourths, three fourths pi. Three fourths, four fourths, five fourths. And the same values would be in the other direction. So negative pi over four, negative three pi over four, and negative five pi over four. Nice. So that's our basic graph of tangent. And if you had to build a basic one, you, you wanna really follow it in the same way. So start off with your asymptotes by figuring out where the bottom is equal to zero, that's cosine, and then go ahead and mark out your zeros, those are the halfway points between your asymptotes, that way you can actually draw on your graphs. And if you want some other additional points in here, then go ahead and chop it in half one more time and you'll figure out where the graph goes through one and negative one, and you'll have a really good picture of tangent. All right, let's go ahead and move on and do the same uh, building process for cotangent. So cotangent you can build in a, in a very similar way. You'd first start off and recognize that cotangent is really cosine over sine. So we're gonna put our asymptotes everywhere that the bottom is equal to zero. So everywhere where sine is equal to zero. All right, let's go ahead and grab our ruler and start making out some uh, little tick marks here. Uh, one of the first places that sine is equal to zero is actually right uh, on the y-axis. So that'd be one of our asymptotes right there. We'll go two inches out. Um, we won't go all the way out. The, the two inches would be right about there. Two inches this way, another two inches. Okay, good. So these guys, if we had to represent them, are at zero. And the first place where sine is equal to zero is right at pi. And the next time way out here would be at two pi. And the same for the negative direction. So negative pi, uh, negative two pi, looks good. All right, so let's draw in those asymptotes. I'm just gonna draw portion of one over here. I don't want to get in the way of what I've already wrote. Let's see, let's get another good one right there. We'll still be able to see uh, two periods of this since our y-axis happens to be one of our asymptotes. In fact, let's go ahead and mark that out. Even though there is a line already there, we do want to remember that this is an asymptote as well. Let's go ahead. All right, so we got some good asymptotes on here. I know that my graph will follow them. Uh, now let's start chopping each of these in half to see where it goes through at zero. So halfway between zero and pi is at pi over two. Halfway between pi and two pi, this would be three pi over two. So one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, looks good. Going in the negative direction, negative pi over two. Halfway, negative three pi over two. Nice. Now the graph of cotangent looks an awful lot like the graph of tangent, but you wanna draw your curves going the other way. So tangent would start uh, off at this right asymptote and then start hugging uh, towards this way, a lot like x cubed. Cotangent works the other way. So we're gonna start hugging really close to this asymptote. Then we're gonna come down and go right through our zero and then hug close to our other asymptote. And there we would have one period of cotangent. All right, then we just wanna repeat this process. So here would be another one, go through our little zero point, hug close to the other asymptote. And let's draw one more, so let's see. So this is coming down, 
going through R0 and then hugging close to the other asymptote. Um, and of course this would just repeat, you know, we'd have just one little bit more over here. And that would be our graph of cotangent. Uh, now, like tangent, we can also mark out some other key values on this. Um, places where it would go through 1 and negative 1. And these places would happen by chopping the intervals in half one more time, so you're exactly halfway between 0 and pi over 2. So let's go ahead and mark out the first one. This would be at pi over 4. And it reaches negative 1 at 1 fourth, 2 fourths, 3 fourths pi negative one. Come out a little bit further, let's go ahead and chop this in half. So we're at one, oh, it looks like I didn't draw my graph entirely uh, accurate, and negative one. So let's see, uh, four fourths, five fourths pi, six fourths, seven fourths pi, and these would be the same values going in the negative direction. So halfway at negative pi over four, 1 fourth, 2 fourths, halfway at 3 pi over 4, negative. So we're up here at 1, down there at negative 1. Uh, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, and let's, let's make that our last one. Neat. So very similar, uh, but, but think of the same process when you're building this one. First, find your asymptotes wherever sine is equal to 0. Then go ahead and figure out where the, the function is going to be zero. Uh, that will actually happen wherever the top is equal to zero, or you can end up just chopping these in half. That's what I like to do. Uh, then you can go ahead and draw out your graph, uh, making sure that for cotangent, it's actually flipped the other way. And then lastly, go ahead and add in a few more key points. These ones at one and negative one will give you just a little bit more accurate picture. Perfect. All right, if you want to make this uh, graphing process even better, it's a really good idea to know the graph of cosine and sine like the back of your hand. So if you haven't already checked out my other video on sine and cosine, go check that other one out. Uh, that way you can learn how to build that one quickly and easily. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.